With Trails Through Daybreak now breaking onto store shelves, Trails is in a new era, one that has fans questioning who the best waifu is for the previous protagonist, Reen Schwarzer. The harem waifu route has upset a lot of Trails fans as they feel it's not as strong, narratively speaking, as the romance between Joshua and Estelle Bright. Yeah, someone has got a serious sibling con at Falcom, or adoptive siblings as the case may be. We'll cover that in a future video pertaining to Reen, but you don't see people dogging on Zero and Azure for the same sins they profess to hate in Cold Steel. Tell me when I'm telling lies! But we're not here to talk about that. What we're discussing today is why Laura S. Arsade is probably the best waifu for Reen. I've previously discussed in a separate video why Emma Milstein is the best wife for Reen. But let's take some time to discuss the character I initially fell in love with personally. Now just a small warning before we get deeper into this video essay. This video is going to feature spoilers up to Trails into Reverie. So if you haven't played the game, maybe check out one of my other Falcom videos. Card will be popping up for that now. For those who don't care about spoilers or those who have caught up on the games excluding Daybreak can continue. Okay, Laura S. Arsade is of the minor nobility in Erebonia. Her father is Viscount Victor S. Arsade. As most of you probably know, Reen Schwarzer is also a noble, but not by blood. Now it's heavily implied that at some point in time, Reen would take over the barony of Ymir ahead of the Schwarzer's own daughter Elise, though I will be covering that in a separate video because again, someone at Falcom has a serious sibling complex. At least they aren't as sick a puppy about it as Yuri Breyer from Spy Family. But back to Reen for a moment, he was adopted by the Schwarzers after some unpleasant things happened to Gilliath Osborne, Reen's biological father. It was because of Osborne's relationship from childhood that he entrusted the rearing of his son to Teo Schwarzer and his wife. Now this is just my headcanon, so take this with a massive pinch of salt. But if you've played the Erebonian arc, you'll know that both Baron Schwarzer and Viscount Arsade are both kind of renegade nobles who do things their own way. They're also both of the minor nobility, meaning they're of similar status. They also run provinces that are considered backwaters of the Empire. This means Reen and Laura both have very similar upbringings. Also, if you bother talking to all of the NPCs and doing all of the side quests, which you should be doing in a Trails game anyways, you'll learn that arranged marriages are still a common thing among the nobles, and are socially accepted by Erebonians as a whole. So my headcanon is that the Schwarzers and Victor might have considered an arranged marriage between Reen and Laura before they both opted to go their own way by attending Thor's. Pay attention to the dialogue during the Graham segment of Cold Steel 1. Victor outright states he had intended for Laura to attend St. Estrella's Girls' School, which is the same school attended by Reen's adoptive sister. It was only at Laura's insistence that she be allowed to attend Thor's. Victor's reasoning for this was because he wanted Laura to grow up as well-balanced an individual as possible, because let's face it, Laura is obsessed with swords. It's to the point a lot of players just see her as one noted, but if you actually bother with her social link, you'll see her goal is to become more feminine and explore things outside of swordsmanship. The fact both Reen and Laura are on the path of the sword is actually one reason I think they work so well as a couple, that plus their shared upbringing I mentioned previously. So let's break down why they're actually good for each other next. The next point was actually the primary reason I was first intrigued by Laura as a potential girlfriend for Reen. It's the fact she's so perceptive that she picked up on Reen's hesitation during the first field study. If you're paying attention, she's actually the first character that isn't Sarah Valestine to pick up that something's off with Reen. In Sarah's case, it's because she had effectively twisted Reen's arm into being an errant boy for the student council on his free days, plus her being more experienced. By JRPG standards, Sarah could be considered an old lady. I say that jokingly. Don't roast me in the comments. We all know what my preference is, and I'm pretty sure Goto is about to tease me for it. Go ahead and promote the editing services while you tease me, good sir. Whoa, whoa, whoa. now listen here. I'm not gonna tease you all too much, because I know your taste and you know mine. They're not that different. I will say though, uh, my editing service is always up, always ready to help you guys promote and do your uh, work. 
I do love to talk with you guys while I'm doing the edits so that you guys get the picture perfect edit you want. I'm just the puppet that'll do the work you need to be done. Thanks guys. But Laura's perceptive nature is a good trait, especially for an individual like Reen. As a whole, Reen is a broken individual. He only really starts to heal around the end of Trails into Reverie. During the events of the first four games where he's the lead protagonist, Reen is self-loathing, self-sacrificing to a fault, and lacking self-esteem. Some of this is because he doesn't feel he deserves the barony of Ymir, as it's not his by birthright. Also, some of it is thanks to him feeling like a ticking time bomb, thanks to his ogre powers. While Laura doesn't know exactly what Reen's hiding, she does realize he's holding himself back as a swordsman, in her first real interactions we see between the two on screen, Reen lies about holding back, claiming to just be an eight leaves one blade dropout who barely achieved beginner rank, which Laura takes offense to. But unlike some who would be downright abusive in how they deal with Reen, like Elisa, tell me when I'm telling lies. Laura Moore points out how Reen was being disrespectful towards a craft they both have in high esteem, and she treats him with kindness, even if she reacted a bit coldly for a few hours until Reen got his head out of his ass. I feel like if Laura hadn't been gentle with Reen in that moment like she was, while still remaining honest and blunt, Reen would have likely not come to the realization that he was in fact being disrespectful not just towards himself, but Laura as well. After this point, their relationship is fairly smooth sailing whether you go the platonic or romance route. Of all of the girls in both new and old class 7, I would say Reen and Laura's relationship is overall the smoothest. This is partially because Laura is such an easygoing individual, something Reen actually needs in his life. As a whole, he's a bit too go with the flow until the end of his journey. In a lot of ways, Reen will let others bully him into doing things he might not want to do, which isn't Laura's speed at all. She's more of the laid-back type who is fine with setting the pace, but also fine with letting others take the lead, something Reen needs to learn throughout his journey. Sure, he is thrust into the leadership role of Old Class 7, but that wasn't exactly his choice. He's just the type of glue guy every team needs, and he leads by example, even if he throws in the occasional corny motivational speech. Because Laura isn't a threatening personality, that's a safe way for Reen to explore taking control. We even see this multiple times throughout their social link, which ties back into Laura seeking to be more feminine. Reen is able to use some of his experience of being an older brother figure to his adoptive sister to think on his feet about cute things when Laura is shopping and trying to find something more girly. As a result, Reen suggests a Mishy plushie. Mishy then becomes something Laura loves a lot. Just look at some of her interactions with the number one Mishy fangirl, Tio Plato. Whenever Laura and Reen interact in one on one situations, the two of them are able to complement where the other is lacking. For example, during the liberation of Bereahard, Laura goes swimming in the middle of winter without thinking to bring a towel to warm up with afterwards. Reen goes to the courageous to get her one. Conversely, Laura gives Reen a reason to keep going when he's super down on himself during the events of the Great Twilight, where not only his depression is at its worst, but his self-sacrificing side is as well. These small interactions during their social link shows that they have each other's best interests at heart. Just from that alone, that's a strong basis for any relationship, platonic or otherwise. There's also the fact they both live by the way of the sword, so that's a common interest they share. Also, if you look at their styles of combat, they complement each other incredibly well. Reen is fast and versatile, but is probably at or near his best when he's chipping away at multiple enemies. Laura can do the multiple enemies thing to an extent, but her best use case is against one particularly stubborn enemy type. There's also a reason why her and Emma are so often used against bosses, as they act as a factor to level the playing field. Emma's a magical nuke, and Laura is your prototypical tank. She takes damage and deals it out just as much, but her DPS is low. Arguably, Reen's best attribute on a mechanical level is his relatively high DPS. But as a whole, Laura and Reen push each other to try new things and they bring out the best in each other. So why should they have been the canon romance? And before someone goes off and says Elisa is the canon romance, let me reiterate this. No, she's not. 
none of the girls are, just because Tashihiro Kondo has a heart on for her and because her and Rin were two of the first characters designed for the games does not mean they're the canon couple. That's why Falcom gave us the choice. Though I would argue the game might have been more compelling in some ways had Falcom picked one, just not Alyssa. As that bitchy sweat hog is actively toxic for Reen, I've covered why in a previous video. So I've covered why Laura and Reen work out well from a lore perspective and how their personalities and interests mesh well together. But why should they have been the canon pairing? It's because of those reasons. If Falcom had gone down that route, Reen would have remained self-sacrificing and would probably still have lost control during the finale of Cold Steel 3, where he killed the corrupted Sacred Beast after it killed Milliam. As I said previously, Reen was a ticking time bomb. We saw moments of this via flashbacks and during the incident where Elise stumbled into the old schoolhouse, where Reen would lose control. While Emma is able to suppress Reen's ogre powers thanks to her magic as a member of the Hexen clan, Laura can't do that. But I think given her perceptive nature and the fact Reen seems to open up to her quicker than any of his other classmates besides Elliot, she might have given him healthier avenues to unleash his ogre powers. I think had she been the canon romance, Reen might have reached a healthier stage far sooner and would likely have achieved intermediate level in Eight Leaves One Blade far faster. Plus, he likely would have become a Divine Blade sooner as well, which would have changed a lot of things in the narrative. But it would have addressed a lot of the gripes people seem to have with Reen as a character, the fact he's wishy-washy, the fact he lacks confidence in himself, and his perceived lack of personality. What a lot of people fail to realize is Reen is an introvert through and through. He's not as extroverted as Estelle Bright or even Lloyd Bannings, though I would argue Lloyd is a rather outgoing introvert, which masks a lot of his similarities with Reen. If I was to hazard a guess as to what typing Reen would score as using Myers-Briggs, I would guess he's either an INFP, INFJ, or INTJ, as he shares traits with all of them. For example, when I take a Myers-Briggs test, I tend to score either INFP, INTJ, ENFP, or ENTJ. It all depends on the day. I personally identify as an ambivert, which yes, that actually exists for those who say it doesn't. It was coined before Myers-Briggs was even a thing by Hans Eisnick in 1941, a full three years before Myers-Briggs became a thing. So, Shut your damn mouth. before spewing about things you profess to be an expert in, but don't understand, just because of your narrow-minded worldview. Sometimes the so-called amateurs know more than the experts. But as a whole, Laura forces Reen to grow, and Reen does the same for Laura. Which happens with all of the social links, yes, but not quite as obvious as it is with these two. Also, from a story perspective, I'd argue Laura makes the most or second most sense, with Emma being the other top contender as the romance between Reen with either of these two fine ladies makes the most sense. This will be an ongoing series. We started with Emma Milstein over a year ago, and now I've broken down why Reen and Laura work so well together. If you liked this video and want to follow this series to its conclusion, then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell, as it'll really help this channel grow. And I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Part of the goal of this channel is raising awareness for lesser known games or franchises that are vastly overlooked by the mainstream. Trails is slated to break into the mainstream in the near future, and when it does, I will continue to cover it, as it's my favorite franchise of all time within gaming. What do you think of Reen and Laura as a pairing though? Please let me know in the comments section, as I'd really love to know your thoughts and even who you'd pair Reen up with. I've made my case for two of the fine ladies of Class 7 already. If you like the ladies of Class 7, hit the like button. Thanks go out to my current channel members, R. Campbell and Danny Boy. If you'd like to help the channel further, you can do so by hitting the join button or the link in the description. If you become a channel member, you'll gain exclusive perks, such as early access to some videos, exclusive content, and shoutouts at the end of every video. Want more of my Trails content? Then check out my previous video in this series, or check out my video about the upcoming Trails in the Sky remake. Until next time, keep blazing that trail.